Alright, hello everyone and welcome to another cross, no not cross code, Project Terra game dev stream. I'm Felix aka Luxen and with me in the voice chat today are Henne aka Geflügel and Flora aka Teflora. And also I think Stefan will show up probably sometime later, at least he said he would join too, I think. Um, so, and um, we also have our music part that I will resume with very intense music. Uh, and our sound part is here too. No, that's better. Okay. <clears throat> and yes, today we will work on Project Terra again. Um, on today's schedule is that uh, we'll work on attack animations because we recently added enough stuff that we have at least some kind of attack working now. It doesn't react with anything yet, but at least animation and effects are working. And uh, one goal would be to... Um, there's no a certain, Currently you see a weapon, but the idea is that the weapon will actually disappear after you attacked, a little bit like in Nier Automata or something like that. Um, and I want to add the effect and the script for that. That's like the first part. And the second part will mostly be just trying to do make better animations, because animations right now are more placeholders. So I just want to experiment a little bit what would look better and all that. So that's the plan for today. Nah, our game support violence as always. Um, we got a couple subscription, one by Tefloa, our most faithful subscriber, uh, who has subscribed for 34 months already, saying, my hair starts to turn gray in here. Yeah. It's, it's been 34 months. Okay. 
we have another subscription by POF and another one by Sayel von Nathan. Thank you very much. And um, yes, so as for our stream basics, uh, it usually goes like we will work on some game dev related stuff first. Um, we can also show some recent progress while we edit. And um, you can feel free to ask any questions as you want in the chat. I'm again not sure if we will do another stream drawing because I again don't plan to stream until very late today. I really still don't have the sleep rhythm for that. But um, but yeah, maybe maybe some short sketch at the end or something. But I will be probably not draw like the design of the protagonist this time around. That uh, led to a lot more stuff that I didn't expect to happen. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, maybe I can just show what the current state is here. Um, do not forget to check cross-centric questions. Oh no, please. <laughs> Let me just check if there actually is anybody wrote a question there. Nope, nothing happened since 2019. We're good. <laughs> okay. Shaking my head, implying that you know drawing craze was a bad thing. I just felt a bit bad about it because I just improvised the design a little bit and it wasn't, wasn't really that great, I thought. And people made so many fan art about it and I thought that such a waste with my poor improvised design that was kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, let me just stream the desktop here and I can show a little bit what we've been working on. Actually, can I show the game itself? Probably. Um, just need to modify the, uh, the layout a little bit. Bear with me. Um, so, we so here you have the game in high resolution. Okay, this is um, the current state. I mean, you may have seen some of the things on Twitter. Um, we have a moving character, you see the character now has a sword here, which is floating, kind of behind the character, that's actually intended. Um, it's a little bit like, kind of like what you have in the Automata, but the idea is that the sword will not stay all the time, but will actually disappear after some time if you stop attacking. Um, so that's something I want to implement today. And yeah, you can, you can jump, you have, we have this short, quick climbing animation now. Um, and you can attack and yeah, so that's, that's kind of like the first prototype for the attack, so to say, um, I'm actually not really satisfied with the animations yet, but I mean, those were created rather quickly just as a test. And, um, I think it looks pretty decent for that already personally. Yeah, like at least the rotating here is like 10 minutes. It was just, I copied the animation, I had a few keyframes and that's it. So like it's it's incredibly quick to create animations with the system. Yeah, the, anim the combo is very much like what Leah does right now. Um, thank you very much, Saiyan Kirby. Always glad to hear that. Um, okay. So, and there were a few more questions that I missed. Um, don't know if you're okay. Uh, okay, do you still upload the VOD on YouTube? Uh, I actually missed doing that the last few times, I think. Sorry about that. I always have to make sure to do that like within a week after the stream because after that the, the videos are lost on Twitch. And yeah. No, not really. Maybe I should do something like that. 
Ähm, okay. Sorry, aber um, now the next is a sound broke. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, that, that, that's um, okay. People again only heard me. I'm sorry. Um, oh. so, so here is like everybody else, including the music and the, the sound bot uh, and everybody that actually said hello before and you couldn't hear them because Hi, I'm an idiot. Hello. So here we go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, uh, hello, yeah. guys. Hello. Oh, same old shit again. Uh, I never learn. And and I said so many interesting things. Damn. Yeah. So much stuff. Yeah, you basically you you told us about the ending of Project Terra, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, too bad. But you missed okay. it. <laughs> Death Kuro also subscribed uh, with Prime for the first month, saying, "Hey guys, did you know?" That if you have an Amazon Prime account and you connect it to your Twitch account, you can subscribe to your favorite streamer for free. That is actually yeah. correct. But we need Stefan wow. or somebody who to read, give us like the whole explanation on how that works. <laughs> um, uh, something that's very important. That's very important about this. It doesn't have to be your favorite streamer. It, it could also be us. Yes, <laughs> very, very good point, Hedda. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> clarifying. <laughs> okay, so, I mean. Um, I mean, yeah, that's correct. So, um, let's see. Uh, all right, so. Um, I didn't expect this, this, uh, this cheap joke to go <laughs> over so well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, so here we go again. Uh, here's like the boring part, a lot of code. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, we have a pause menu. Actually, a lot of stuff happened that I didn't show most of it. Um, we got another subscription by... Let me quickly check. Nerd, nerd who, watches who watches football. football. Thank you, Nerd but, uh, who watches football for this... <laughs> For the fifth month subscription, even though football, so, like, at least the interesting football uh, season is over. Uh, it depends what kind of football. If yeah. they mean American football or, um, you know, real football. I think uh, by the way, Kovac, that's a really uh, vintage meme that you uh, dished out there. Or rather, vintage tweet from 2016. Man. Vintage. Oh, it's man. like this one. <laughs> it's such a good one. <laughs> you know uh, what? I'm just gonna retweet it so people are confused <laughs> by retweet. That's a nice tweet too. We just released Crosscode Hotfix 0832. For all new players, the game should now start again. Sorry. Yeah. That's like so a very, that, that, that's a quality very... game development in the ready fish game style. I mean it was still during early access, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's well. okay. <laughs> We released a couple versions where they, you couldn't start a new game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the game is the best game ever, but you can't start it, it's basically Schrödinger's best game, right? <laughs> Great. True. What? I mean, not really, but kind of. Uh, <laughs> please don't bring quantum physics into this. Um, okay, quantum so... Quantum physics in my household. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, player component. Let's Physik see. aus meinem Lass mich mit der Physik in Ruhe. Die hat in meinem Leben nichts zu tun. Wieso rede ich Deutsch? Keine Ahnung. Okay. okay, suddenly so, your foot first... doesn't fall anymore. <laughs> Or move for for that matter. Mm. Okay, the first thing I will do now is just to quickly explain. Um, my first task is to make sure that this weapon disappears again after some time. So it should not flow behind you all the time, but maybe just for some time, maybe one or two seconds, and then it will disappear again. But that's kind of like uh, what we wanted to do for now. I mean, we will, of course will experiment with different things, but that's the plan for now. So I just need to implement that feature. Um, and then it should al also like disappear with a small small effect. I actually already have something prepared for that and I have to see if that works properly. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for now. Let's see. Okay. 
So, I have hmm. been sick this whole week. Oh boy. <laughs> it was annoying. I um, mean, yeah. I have the uh, tonsillitis, it's called in English. Uh, it's uh, Mandel Entzündung in German. Oh, mm. it's um. Wait a second, I can, I can. Uh, uh -huh. It's it's almond um, burning. Wait, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 almond burnout. <laughs> That's great. It's yes. no, it's it's almond ignition rather. Learn English with radical fish games. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And uh, it's the first time I ever had this in my mm -hmm. life, at least as far as I remember. Um, and it sucks because I was um, I was out meeting people, and I think I got sick there. Oh yeah, uh, from someone else. And um, it just started with a swelling in the neck. And I thought, oh mm -hmm. okay, my immune system is just working right now it's it's doing its job right but it uh went further up and up and up into my throat and yeah then oh, damn. i couldn't breathe normally i couldn't swallow normally and and i had to take some anti antibiotics i'm still taking them um but yeah i spent the week mostly sleeping i guess sleeping and um drinking tea lots and lots of tea yeah yeah tea good but i also played video games mm. that's good that's very helpful i am um, a doctor say yeah yeah they always recommend them <laughs> mm. <laughs> what did you play um i started playing uh, tribes of midgard oh and... that one yeah, it's it's actually really fun. Um, a friend uh, of mine was just asking me, "Hey, would you like to play this?" And because <laughs> um, I mostly because I like to play games with him, I said, uh, "Yeah, sure, let's check it out." Uh, um, we got like three subscription: ooh. one by Chrysalay, oh, wow. one by Benzier, and one by Black Eagle, who actually subscribed for eighteen months already, saying, "Hi, everyone. The three Forgel is here." Three oh, Forgel. Wow. Oh yes, it's it's it's, it's Bill Fork, three Forgel. Bill Bill Fork. Bill Fork. Bill Fork. Three Forgel. Three Forgel. Yes. Three Forgel. This case. Bill Fork. Hi, here. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, so Tribes of Midgard is um you can play it in solo or you can play it in multiplayer and I think you can play it with up to ten people. Mm -hmm. And um you are it it plays in like yeah, uh, Nordic uh what it's what is it called this this time of age? Norse? Norse? Yeah, not it it plays in the Norse myth mythology kind of uh and um, I have to. I have to admit, I uh, mixed it up with another game. With um, mm. because there was really a ton of games that have like a lot of Norse mythology lately. That's true. Right. That's true. They're quite a few. I, th I forgot uh, which one it was. It was like this game that was basically, I think, a cooperative three D, um, uh, open world city building game or something it's an action city building game i forgot what the name was but it also had something with uh, viking names and, and stuff <laughs> gonna look it up okay nice um so in there you have a small town and you need to defend it at night it, uh, monster, mm -hmm. monsters come in and you have a little bit of a tower defense mechanic there but you can also fight yourself and you have like gates and uh, some towers you can build and make stronger over the period of, it, of the game. And then you go out uh, and gather resources and um, explore the area and the map, which is randomly generated. And there are different biomes where you can, some of them are uh, dangerous at the beginning of the game. 
So you need to find resources to uh, to be able to withstand the heat or the cold, for example, in some of them. Mm -hmm. um, and you have many, many um, objectives you can do. Um, and that's that's what's pretty fun about playing with like 10 people. You can really spread out over the whole map. You can do your own thing. Or you can go and like uh, maybe with a friend and explore together. So you have a backup when you die or something. Right, and, right. Uh, yeah, there, there are many things you can do and you should prior prioritize different uh, things at different times. Sometimes um, every now and then a huge boss spawns on the map, a Jotun. And mm -hmm. it's like a giant and can be a frost giant and basically an elemental giant. And it's super tanky. It can almost one shot you if you don't dodge the attacks, but they're really slow and they um, they take several days to walk to your um, base. But once they're there, you have basically lost. <clears throat> and so uh, you have several days to fight this this boss and you can uh, go back to your base and uh, get resources back and stuff and heal up and then go back in, fight for uh, another day and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there, there are many, many things, different things to do and things to find out about the game. There's different classes too with, with some skills and you can go with different, different weapons, different elements. And of course, not everyone in the group can do everything. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, finding um, the resources for that protects you from heat they're very rare so maybe only one or two person can make equipment to be safe from the heat and the only those can then explore those biomes basically mm -hmm. um, makes sense um also a uh, little aside the game that i meant was mm -hmm. uh valheim i think oh yeah valheim i i wanted to try that it was really hype for mm -hmm. like a week or two um, mm -hmm. Right. And now I don't know uh, if anyone is still playing that game. I still wanted to try it. I yeah, right. Know, it's... Um, I wanted to wait a little bit uh, longer because um, early access always. Um, early access. Yeah. Yeah. People said, uh, right. The last time I asked people, they said, oh, yeah, it's really, really good and really fun. It just lacks content, basically, which mm -hmm. is perfectly fine for, for early access. And so I wanted to wait a little bit longer until it's. I mean, it seems like it's still it's, it's still course. going. Yeah, I, I think it's still going well uh, according to the mm -hmm. to the like uh, reviews and stuff because it has it has like overwhelmingly positive overall with two hundred twenty seven thousand. That's like good, mm. <laughs> and um, the recent reviews are still like ninety one percent positive so it's not okay. like it, it, it it's yeah. not like a game that fell off a cliff or something mm -hmm. uh, by doing yeah. stupid for, things for, for me it's just uh, when i get into those games i really like to play them very intensely and a lot mm -hmm. um for a few mm -hmm. weeks probably mm -hmm. and so i want to make sure i have enough content to enjoy it for long enough right um I also started playing another game. I just started yesterday with um, with Julian and um, and uh, Van. Van, mm -hmm. yeah, and Philip, I Van think, Van. right? I heard about yes. that. Uh, Risk of Rain, the new yeah. one. Risk of Rain two. Yes. So ah, Risk of Rain Risk two, of Rain right? 2. And wow, that was so much fun. It, it yeah, was I can incredible. See that. We made it to the to the last boss two times, and we died uh, both times. <laughs> yeah. oh. um, but it's actually uh, pretty good because it was our first time playing it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we made we made sure that um, 
if we don't steal uh, updates, upgrades from each other, and it's, mm -hmm. it's basically a bit balanced, and sometimes someone buys an upgrade and says, oh, that's good for your character, you come over and take it. Mm -hmm. and that's been really fun. And I mean, Risk I've of been... Rain? I... I've been playing the Sorceress, who's like super agile and mobile, and um, you can have different mobility upgrades mm -hmm. too, and she's so much fun to play, holy shit. <laughs> Um, I did a lot of damage and a lot of kills, and I sometimes could uh, could even uh, carry when uh, all the other ones died. I could still finish the fight and finish the stage for us. That happened like two times or so. Hmm. That felt really good. That reminds me. I I also have it on my um, on my wish list. I think I never. I it for some reason yet, because I already have so much stuff in my in my library, of course, and also I don't know why I didn't do that. Maybe it was it was when I uh, before I had this PC or something. But yeah, it it, it looks definitely super good, and I, I was a huge fan of the first one already. Mm. Isn't that Risk of Rain music right now? Uh, wait a second. I need to make the music a bit louder for me. Uh, Yep. It is. That's Over. risk. It's, <laughs> nice. It's one of my favorite tracks yeah. actually. <laughs> like the main and, main track. And yeah, it's I was I, was, I, I knew it was fun, but I I didn't expect it to be so much fun. We played it for mm -hmm. I think seven hours or something. Or six maybe. And I don't even I don't even know. Did the first one have co-op? <laughs> Did the first one have? Ah, no, five. it didn't. I okay. Played, I played for five hours. Okay. Okay. The first one was only single player, and the second one has <laughs> four player co-op, right? I think it's four player. Or yeah, yeah, or makes sense. More. It doesn't it really. Uh, what does it say? Four? Co-op? Ah, uh, it doesn't... Mm. Uh, risk of Rain 2. Oh, people uh, say the first one had multiplayer co-op too. Really? It's, it's weird because on the Steam uh, page it doesn't say so. But it, it would make sense that it, it, it would at least have uh, two-player co-op. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I think it's also um, a good time to get into the game because I think it's, I guess it got some updates over the, t over the years mm -hmm. and it probably okay. some balance patches as well. So, um, uh, Maulmann says always... that they changed the last area apparently. There's no um, characters. Oh, the, the last area feels really like epic. It's so huge. It's mm -hmm. really, really big. Um, and uh, let me read a second. Oh, okay. It it says four players, so it's it has four player. Oh, speaking of, uh, I have something to to uh, uh, say when you are finished. There's speaking still of. an escape sequence after the boss, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but I I ne have I never made it. Also, uh, I never beat the boss, so I don't know. But I oh, so saw basically, that there's a spaceship or something, and it's it's locked until you defeat the boss. So I think the last I think Risk of Rain one also had some escape sequence, but I'm not entirely. Yeah, I think it did. I think it did. Because I beat Risk of Rain one a few times. Uh, does Risk? Of... Wait, give me a second. I want to check out which classes there are. If, if it has all the classes from the from the first one uh, or characters or whatever. Mm. Uh... And I read that there um, is still an update coming, a free update soon, I think, mm -hmm. and another first paid one is coming at the end of the year 
and I'm actually excited for that because um, the the game is a few years old already, but they're still mm -hmm. making content for it, and mm -hmm. it seems like when they start with DLC, with paid DLC, that they want to keep that up for at least a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense mm -hmm. to to ask for some money for from because it's aimed at like uh, hardcore fans and long term. Yeah, of course. Fans and uh, stuff. By the way, we had a, we got a question a few months ago, months, minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, so this is so is all of the content in Terra loaded from a JSON? Maps, animations, item dev, step scripting. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, most things mm. which are not graphics or sounds um, are pretty. Yeah, mm. all of them are pretty much JSON. Yeah. Oh, I just, I'm just seeing. I, I, I guess they removed the, um, the, the shield character. I guess mm. the one with. The sh but I can totally see that um, because that one was already somewhat hard to play in the first game, and in 3D, I guess it might have been even. Harder mm. because that was such a slow class mm -hmm. that it might have been a bit a bit difficult to play mm. in um, in like a very movement heavy game. I'm also really excited for mods. I don't know how mm -hmm. mods work with multiplayer, but I can imagine that people make some really cool characters and classes mm -hmm. uh, that are actually balanced, like not overly OP or something. Uh, because I, I, of course, I haven't played the, all the classes yet. I just looked at some footage online and I always love mobility. <laughs> mobility is my mm -hmm. favorite thing to do in, in those kind of games. Um, and I think the Huntress is always, is already the, the best mobility class in the game. Mm -hmm. So I hope that through some, some mods, I get more different mobility classes. Ah, right. And, and, um, Enforcer was the name of the shield class in the first game. Mm -hmm. And I think they didn't, they, they didn't uh, put that in the, oh, wait, there's apparently a captain, but it doesn't have any, any description on the wiki. Oh, well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep, some back with profile music. Uh, by the way, um, I just wanted to say it now before I forget it. Um, Julian is going to be streaming today and uh, oh. maybe we can raid him. Yeah, we can. Yeah, today. yeah. <laughs> I already suggested that <laughs> to him recently that we can do that. Just depends. Nice. I hope he doesn't stream too late though. But yeah, when he's streaming... I think he usually starts around 9 or 10. That should work. Is he still working on uh, on, on, on content for... Nah, for Lacuna is again. finished already. I mean, he's not Lacuna's working finished. there. No, I mean, Digital is not working on a new game. I think, hmm? I think uh, today he, he wrote me, let me... Um, hmm? He wants to check out the indie arena booth and hmm. play some indie games. And after oh, right. that, he probably is gonna continue his uh, cross code play. Oh, he's playing. He, he play cross -code. Oh, yes, cross -code That's, yeah. he, he paused playing cross code for like uh, several months, I think, mm. and just. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, on a day on stream, he jumped back into it, and he was in the middle of the shock that. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, it's poor like soul. Perfect Maybe he was spot to get back into the game. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like all Maybe the puzzles he was a bit suddenly out on those puzzles. Hmm. Yeah. Like the thing is, he didn't even start any of the jungle dungeons yet. He's now in the in the in the underwater dungeon where you get like the mm. shock element, which I call the wave dungeon, but everybody else seems to call the shock dungeons. Like you know, <laughs> screw my life. You know how it is. Um. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, like and he still has to do like the wave dungeon and the the wave and shock dungeon, like the tree dungeon after that. Mm. So let's see how everything That's is breaking. Fine. Yep. Uh, 
But yeah, he, I, I gave him some some reminders of the mechanics of the shock ball and backseat he gaming. He got back back into it. No, right. I, I I asked him if he wanted uh, tips first, and I formulated them in a way that's not um, really telling. Mm -hmm. um, it was either reminding him mm -hmm. of something he already learned at in the game before, or just like nudging slightly into the right direction. He, mm -hmm. he he told me he complimented me that those tips are really good. That's nice. <laughs> <I think. laughs> uh, oh, no, no, no new questions actually. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, and uh, and um, Deke or well, Hedy K is also still doing his um, uh, game creation mm, yeah. thingy. He's doing good progress. Good progress. I mean, he already um, released some demo, right? Or some official? Yeah, the uh, mm -hmm. on the. On the SEPA, the Sonic, uh, oh yeah, right, thing, platformer. It's basically Sonic fan games. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see. He's pretty cool with the fan games. They can actually yeah, yeah, do that, right. not like Nintendo, <laughs> who ban everything. Uh, ban everything. Nintendo. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking that he was still doing game dev, but I guess he's. He's playing like f uh, fan games now. Okay, so I mean, it works in principle, it's just that the animation doesn't seem to work yet. Maybe uh, something's wrong with the assets. So, like, we, we talked about like four player games, right? In, it's in Risk of Rain 2. Mm. Guys, related to that, four players stopped being active. Coldstar oh, no. Games ask, uh, do you think you all might bring Terra to Bit Summit in the future? I mean, if that's another opportunity to visit Japan, it's very, it's very likely. If we can't do that again in the future, <laughs> I mean, <Sure. laughs> we oh, have been amazing. to Bit Summit uh, a f like a few times, and it was always nice. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a Sonic game. Because okay, Chunk, that's... and I are uh, like um, EO2 footprint, but. Huh. Oh wow, that's a really, really recent really, question. The last time I calculated it in that year, uh, it it was like, I think over half of my footprint was the travel. What was half of your footprint? Uh, the travel, the flight to Japan. Japan. Yeah, okay. Oh, of the C2 yeah, okay. footprint, yeah, mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, makes sense if you don't drive cars and and everything. I mean, yeah. driving cars is usually one of the biggest f um, footprints. Yeah, and the uh, irony is, if you take a plane, that's about that's like a year of driving. That's that's like what's so I dramatic mean, it, it, about it. It's like really ridiculous. It depends on your car, I think, and how much you drive. Mm. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, flying to Japan is a long flight, so. Yeah. But I mean, is it really just your your part of the entire flight, or is it the entire yeah, flight with the plane? Yeah, I mean, if I <laughs> understood it correctly, it really is just your part. I mean, flying is just okay. so much uh, pollution, apparently. Like, even if you take, yeah, like, okay. divided I mean, by the passengers on average or something. Mm. Um, it's really, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. So. I mean, it is a long distance, that's true. Yeah, it's like 12 hours. Okay. Mm. What did I want to say? Yeah. Uh, as I said, for players, for players, is stopping its um, its game journalistic activities basically. And for people who don't know, for players, is basically one of the biggest and I, and also one of the oldest online um, yeah. games. Yeah, let's say online game magazines slash communities. Like they they were basically a site with like big 
forum oh, okay. uh, for game topics and also um, a site where they put on like game reviews and game reports and stuff like that. And it will still exist apparently, but they will now focus on like multiplayer servers and the very vague promise of like um, software solutions for game developers. Which is like such a vague word that I'm not really sure what that means, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pretend that I was really uh, one of the people that still visited game uh, for players for uh, regularly. But it's still kind of an interesting thing because uh, it has a long tradition in Germany and also one of the one of the biggest um, RPG maker communities in Germany was located on four players. Mm. Mm. The good old RPG quartier, okay. which was like, which had like the uh, the forums at four players like four years after the site wasn't even officially on four players anymore because apparently it was just never found by the admins, which was pretty <laughs> funny. Yeah. Anyway, uh, would the game in principle work in the browser? Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, we are currently actually now relying on some features which are only available in the WebKit, but I think those are mostly for relevant for um, the editors. Then again, I think we might do the same for the saving system. And I'm not sure if we have uh, anything like written to make it work for the browser, though we could extend it to kind of like support the browser as well. Would be some work. But I mean, actually, like one of the big differences that this time we really fully focus on not WebKit. For the most part, it will be working in the browser. It's just that we kind of like, for instance, we use the file API of uh, Node.js to read and set um, to write the save files. We do that already in CrossCode too. In CrossCode, we also have like a backup to use local storage. And I think for Terra, we currently don't have that backup, but we could add this again. So, yeah. Okay, so here we go. The, f the sort of now yeah. appearing and disappearing. It already yeah. works. That was quick. Um, the p hmm, okay, something is wrong. Mm. Ah, when you cancel the action by dashing, it doesn't blink immediately. Okay, that's wrong. Let's see. No effects. It will just pop out of existence. It was just pop, yeah, right. <laughs> No, I, um, I'm pretty sure there will be effects. Yeah, I mean, there might be yep. some effects, but I think they will be very subtle. Um, um, will this game... Will this game... Magic will heave weapons, like told in crosscode, like the ring blade, but then more combat-based animation and not just shooter style? Wait, okay, is... let's unpack this. It's a bit, it's a bit hard to uh, the question by Forgotten Star. I'm not entirely sure crack your what they mean. And crack the code. Make game um, mechanic. Ma 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 magic. Magic will heave weapons like magically, but then more combat-based animations. Ah. <clears throat> Mechanic, game mechanic. Oh, mechanic. Mechanic, okay, mechanic. Will heave weapons like Ach, have weapons, I see. Yeah no, it's 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 okay. It, 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 we just need to take some time to uh will heave weapons like Yeah, it's oh. all good. Sorry. We it's don't all good. We just need make fun we of just it. need some time to get uh to get it um Uh, do you mean like if it has ranged weapons? Because yes, the game will have w ranged weapons. Yes. And it will have a uh, different range. It, I mean, we already said that a few times in the past, I think. But we are planning for the main character to have like several um, different main, uh, melee and different ranged weapon types. 
which will be also be more based on like um, more typical weapon types that you would think of in real life, like swords and maybe crossbows and stuff like that. Emma. And and yes, and they will of course also look different. Like, no, no, it it will have to, it will be different weapons with different looks and also somewhat different fighting styles. Yeah, that's why mm -hmm. we um, we wanted this animation system so we would be able to easily create many animations for yeah. different weapons. Like one big part is that you can actually replace the weapon that is held by the player. So we can reuse animations, but just the creation of animations is much quicker with that system, which I probably will demonstrate next because I want to try to make that animation look a bit better, like the attack animation. Mm. I actually had a look before the stream at the attack animation of Breath of the Wild and my goal is to just kind of like try to copy that a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I thought that, look, that looks yeah, pretty we, good. And we can yeah. maybe take a look at it on stream again so we have yeah, 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 I can do that. Um, uh, by a quick question by Kovac, I got as a question as um, if the game has more melee weapons instead of layer ball shooters yeah 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 as i said you you will have swords and hmm. can, can, uh, can i tease can i tease one more weapon style yeah i think one is fine it's it's very original guys you will all, not only have swords but also have nunchucks wow okay just kidding uh it's bs <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's this kind of a couple of couple of weapons that we have planned. It's not it's not really set in stone entirely yet, but we are had those weapons picked for some time now, and it's, it's very lucky we use them. Okay. Uh, why does the human brain ignore the second Z? What do you mean? Why does the the human brain ignore the second the? Oh. Ah, 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 ooh. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we fell right nice. into it. It's especially tricky on my screen because uh, uh, the you just first this the, murder on the, on the first line, line yeah. and the second one is on the second line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a really good one. So if the girl Lagan girl is that egg this game, you actually. Drill towards. Yeah, I mean, we will also handle the equipment much differently okay. in this game compared to CrossCode. <laughs> All right, so the first part is essentially done now because, like, the Batman appears and disappears. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, the next part mm. will be trying to make a better animation. So let me see if I can find that video again. Do I have it here? No. Um, uh, of the wild attack animation. Somebody made a nice video of all the attacks. Yeah, unfortunately, mm. don't see them from above. That would have been more useful. I think mm. that, like this one guy, what's his name again, who also follows our development, who does the other very impressive 3D pixel art game that Stefan likes to link a lot. <sighs> Tesla? Huh? Yeah, Tesla, right. He made a video about his attack animation, he also looked at Breath of the Wild, and he made some nice videos mm. about uh, Link attacking from above, which I would like to have a look at. Um, like the most important thing I notice is that kind of like Link is leaning to the side he's swinging the sword at. Like uh, he's leaning to the right when the sword ends at the right side and to the left. So there's like uh, going left, right, left, right. And this might look good, I think. And like kind of like make it look like there's more range. And that's kind of like what I want to try. And yeah, it's like this. Mm hmm Okay, so now let's look, uh, let's make an attack animation. And also I want to make a, like a very short, um, a very short uh, pre-attack frame, like you actually see where um, the attack comes from. I, I posted the video from Tess later as well, with ah, the yeah. timestamp of the Zelda animation. Mm hmm okay, yeah. that's, that's nice to know. Yeah. Oh, 
That's mm. so useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I would probably do something like that, but the character will still slide while sweeping, and that usually doesn't look mm. bad. Uh, as long as there's some movement in, in the legs, um, it's okay to let the character mm. slide around. It's usually tolerated. So, yeah, um, like I'll push forward. In I mean, that's exactly what you have here. Essentially, you know, just swaps out the, the legs. Uh, one is like uh, more in front than the other. Like for Link, they're kind of like, I think almost at, uh, let me look at the animation again. Um, So let's look at this from top again. Yeah, you can see like the the legs are essentially on a line, so they're not not one uh, leg. Actually, one leg is at the front and the other one is behind, and they don't swap. I think that's a big difference. That's something I will make different. So like, when he sweeps in the other direction, like you know, uh, she will actually move like the other leg in front, and then it kind of like looks like yeah. you're moving forward when attacking. I think that will make it look more aggressive. Um, mm. But I, I just like this approach that you kind of like lean to the side where you're swinging the sword and that's what I want to try. Um, okay, so let's look at that animation editor. It's actually, I think I think so I worked a little bit with the animation it editor. Makes, it also makes sense to cover a wide range when you have a wide stand. Yeah, yeah, essentially, exactly. So like the attack animation here, that was actually kind of improvised. The funny thing, I just tried something and I just stick with it and tweaked it a little bit and that's why like the first frame is actually really funny she's kind of like jumping um, um which is kind of funny you don't see that but um hmm? uh, by the way small thing Kovac uh mentioned you can slow down videos with a gear icon you can oh, also yeah, that's true. press the dot and comma icon uh, button go frame by frame that's actually true dot and comma mm -hmm. oh yeah Wow, okay, that, that's really useful, nice. Yeah, and he has like a few frames um, before he starts to sweep. And that's actually something I want to do too. Kind of like a few frames where, you know, holds, uh, moves out like, uh, prepares mm. a weapon before the sweep. Because currently that's entirely missing. Crosscode also never had that. Like the sweep was always immediately. And uh, like for... Project Terra would like to have like a few frames before the attack. Not mm. a lot, at least not for the sword. Like a sword should still be a mm. rather quick weapon, but think, it shouldn't be as immediate, I think. I think RD mentioned somewhere that we wanted to have the uh, the fighting a little bit slower than in Crosscode. And I yeah, think yeah. things mm. like those, mm. we mean. Yeah, kind of like this. Okay, I call this now attack new one and I will actually start with the plank slate. Okay, the first thing I will do is actually change the weapon here. You can actually... Oh. Forgotten stars asking, you don't gonna do something like Nia Automata where with the sword floating behind the body in the end. Oh, actually yes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's exactly what we will do, sorry. Um, yep. And they're like, uh, yeah, it's not, there's, there's also some lore background behind that. Yeah, I think it's a good mixture of both lore and technical stuff, because yeah. from a technical standpoint, it's just very easy to animate. Mm. <laughs> um, so that's a big plus in, in, in our mind. And lore is magic, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I forgot that I just I, I, put the... Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be as far as um, as a Nier Automata. Mm. Uh, in Nier Automata, you, there was also, you had a big arena, the camera could go very far mm. out, so you, of course, have a big range of attack, and that's where the floating makes sense, so you have wide range. For us, it doesn't have to be that extreme. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, first, I will make um, her point a little bit lower. And most of the time, for the actual attacks, um, they're still gonna hold them in their hands. Hmm. 
And maybe like a throwing special attack or something. We'll see. We will see. I can. Hmm. I can imagine if we need more range and we can just slightly increase the size of the blade for a few frames. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, how long did the tra transition to 3D took you? It looks like an in incredible amount of work with all the editors, terrain, animation, effects. Well, it took some time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Basically, since we started the project last last year in December, yeah. or even before that, um, we've been working with that goal in mind. Yeah. And a lot of it was like on based on a lot of intuition, I think, and it just turned out to be working. Yeah, kind of like that. So I mean, I, I like we we were planning. We had this idea for a long time. I mean, a lot mm. of it kind of like resulted out of our cross code experience. Mm. Um, we kind of like, uh, like. But we always ran with the expectation that oh, it might not work. That's so true. We have fallback a two D fallback. Yeah. Essentially, the idea was we will work with 3D in any case, but it's not 100% certain if we uh, will stick with the perspective distortion. So we might just go back to... Um, we might just go back to orthogonal projection and make it look exactly like... Um, exactly like... Well, cross code more or less, just um, slightly different. Um, but yeah, I mean, so far, like the whole perspective thing seems to work out rather well. So uh, looks like we'll stick with it. Uh... Oh, Dagnant asks, will this new system make it easier to have alternate costumes? And yes, yes, it does. yes. Actually, in, this is in, wrong. Uh, in in crosscode for for example for the ninja skin we had to replace the whole style sheet and uh, not style yep. sheet, sprite sheet for leia with all her poses that's why in um a lot of cutscenes she just turns back into normal leia skin mm. because there's just so many graphics to exchange yeah and it um we also did that so we uh, it wouldn't feel weird when the portraits weren't changed <laughs> Mm, that's true. Which is why man layer was actually much more work because we also need to replace mm. the portraits and a lot of a lot more of the scene scene yeah. poses. But yeah, silly silly heads will probably be a thing. <laughs> much more realistic at least. Um Victor says, Sup guys, just here to say Crosscode is one of my favorite games ever. Back to lurking I go. See you oh. all on Discord server. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you much, very much. Um, did I miss something? Osta asked, why does the head make this weird rotation? I think it's probably because the head is just eight directions. Currently. Yeah, I mean that's that's it. And there will there might be more later, but you never actually see those fluid rotations that you hear see here. That's actually kind of like just um, yeah, like it looks worse and now because we have those fluid rotations, but in practice we never see those. But they're just very useful for editing. So that's kind of like the thing. You can you can maybe show with the eight or 16 directions in the top left corner uh, like that would be what you see in game yeah so what you see is essentially those directions that's all you see and that's like that's essentially as many rotations as the head has so that's that doesn't look as bad then Oh, by the way, in mm. um, 
uh, Flynn, uh, Son of Crimson, will release in like a bit over two weeks, on the 15th hmm. of September. Nice. Oh yeah, a few days before our anniversary. Oh. Hmm. Um. Another uh, question. Hmm. Have you already come up with uh, the gameplay features for Project Terra? How will it differ from CrossCode's gameplay? And, well, uh, yes. We do have <laughs> a, a lot of things. ideas, yeah. Uh, we still, of course, need to like test them if mm. they actually work in the game. I just um, want to try some things here. But I mean, we we already mentioned the uh, weapon system, so that will uh, that will be. A core thing similar to the balls in Crossco, so they will play a role for puzzles as well. And um, uh, there are other things that change the pace. I think. Um, can I talk about the the checkpoints? Uh, sure. So one idea was that uh, in Crosscode, uh, when you basically died on a map, you would just send back to the start of the map again. And also you would uh, like fully recharge your health between fights. And that's something we want to change to uh, more like Dark Souls, where you have certain checkpoints and that's where you can refill your heal items. And then you have to get to the next checkpoint without uh, dying and like using your healing resources in a correct manner mm -hmm. um, so in, in crosscode the idea was like, every fight for itself should be a challenge and now it changes to like okay getting from checkpoint to checkpoint should be the challenge basically more or less yeah that, that was the idea I'm currently tweaking some death value, something I probably shouldn't be doing, but I uh, want to. But, do you like it when people mod your game? Yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, sure. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's, it's really definitely, cool. uh, definitely nice to see. Yeah. Yeah, people are so talented, and uh, we've seen some cross code mods already. Um, there's a whole boss challenge mod that was really impressive. Mm. Um, and we try to um, make it easier uh, for modders for in Project Terra. Um, so in the end, they should be able to add their own weapons, to add their own attacks and enemies, uh, stuff like that. Yep. Mm, I think I still need to experiment with those shoes. Ah, such a like again like whenever i do animations i notice like i want to tweak some of those um thing it's like it's really tricky but i recently added a feature that might make a few things more doable and i will still want to try if i can actually do things a bit better since i implemented that but i mean okay for now like I, that's too much work right now i just want to make some animation the funny thing is like whenever you edit those things you notice so many of those weird details it doesn't look great but you really don't notice them in the game that's kind of like the secret to the whole thing you need to accept that things are messy because like people probably don't notice and probably won't care in like most cases i mean it's one of the big secrets of game development to not be too perfectionistic Mm. about things that people don't tend to notice um damn i think i need to oh, yeah. add like a rotation to where you can always rotate along an axis not like the local axis mm. it's like a few things that like sometimes it's difficult to get like the rotation that you want Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do the other frame.
I just learned something. Wait, what? Nice sword. Oh, no. <laughs> what? No, I get it. Mickey Brett uh, wrote, nice sword. And I imagined it with a nice cock meme with Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> And she wrote, I immediately regretted writing that two seconds after I realized it would sound like that meme. Oh no. Uh, by the way, um, I just learned something interesting. Um, did you know how the logo of the... Basically, of the women's uh, branch of our conservative party looks like? No. So basically the, the Frauenunion, quote unquote. No. I'm just gonna post the, the I'm just gonna post the Twitter profile pic in Discord. <laughs> no <laughs> No yes No sh Okay let me let me see what is in our local Discord Oh no, no. no in stream Discord Oh no <laughs> Oh boy Yeah. And yeah, they are actually they are actually using that for their official stuff. Ooh. No. Oh my god. Oof. Oof. Oh, please. At least try to be serious. Um <laughs> I don't know what they were trying to do there, but um Well. Anyway. Wow. Fun stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, people, you had great questions so far. Keep them going. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Uh, Felix That's hasn't shown it on stream, I, guess, I think. Hmm? What have I shown? Have you shown the uh, Frauenunion logo on screen? No, should I? I think. Okay. I mean, you can. Yeah, people, people are expecting it and now they Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yes. <laughs> so here, look. That That's the Frauenunion thing. It's um, Frauen Union. It, It's basically the, um, the, woman, the women's branch, I guess, of, our, of the German Conservative Party. Like, center-right Conservative Party. It's just F.U. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hm. <laughs> hm. Schwierig. 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 Um, by the way, Felix, mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, uh, when we were talking about sound and implementation, mm -hmm. I said I would like to have at least the class structure for like sound sound events. Yeah. Um, where you have m basically multiple sounds you can play with one mm -hmm. button. And... <clears throat> I think that's uh, actually important or very useful for stuff like uh, footsteps and weapons because there you have parameters you want to change on the fly. I mean, I guess that's true, but yeah, I mean, it's like still, I mean, I mean we don't we don't need an editor yet for it. You can, yeah, well, of course, you can just uh, start working on the classes if you think that's useful. Okay. Felix, I have something really interesting mm. to tell you. 
Ja. About Gacha Games. Oh no. <laughs> no, two things. Um, and the first thing is it's, it's a very gripping story that is comparable to like a classic hero's tale, almost. Mm -hmm. Listen, and be very excited. I think last week or 10 days ago, the Konosuba Gacha came out in the West, Felix. Mm -hmm. And Felix, I actually downloaded it because I wanted to at least look at it. And? and so I did. And I did. And then I played it for like two hours. And then I realized, man, this game has really good assets. It's really cute. But I also realized, man, this is a really mindless and annoying gacha. So I stopped playing it. Who would have thought? And then, a uh, day later, um, I was still on the verge of maybe looking into it once or twice every few days. And then I got annoying, like, um, you know, those typical n notification messages that you get from Telegram or Twitter or some or stuff. But this gacha gave me no, um, gave me notification messages like, "Oh, hey, don't forget to log in every day to do this and this." And I was like, "Okay, fuck off." I did the Frauenunion thing and said, "Fuck <laughs> fu." Mm. And then I uninstalled it. Very end. nice. Very good. Very nice. Nice choice. <laughs> no, it was interesting because a friend of mine um, from Discord said, oh man, this game is basically a reskin of Princess Connect. It's a gacha game. Mm. And Princess Connect is kind of infamous for having like those very mindless uh, auto battle systems. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets around the 10 p.m. anime rule by talking about gacha games. This is oh, like no. tax evasion. <laughs> I mean, I could also talk about VTubers. It's also like tax evasion. Um, yeah. And the second thing, and this is more of a, a funny um, a funny thing. Uh, did you know that there was a Mega Man Gacha game? Okay. As a Mega Man Gacha game, I think it's a platform. I don't know. I haven't. I've never played it. A platformer with like Gacha mechanics. Of course, they also have waifus, like uh, hmm. sexy robots and like uh, beach bathing suit versions of like hmm. <laughs> some of those female Mega Man characters, you know the gist. Um, but what's really funny about the game is that it's apparently super mismanaged in the, on the Western market because apparently it only has like three people who manage it. So you basically have like this gacha game that of course needs some management in behind it like someone for sure. the social media someone who does like the localization and manages like moderation and stuff because i mean it is rather popular from what i heard yes Mega Man x dive that's the name but apparently the moderate the like administration of the gacha game overseas is really bad because its team is very inexperienced and only has like three or four people working on it. Okay. So you, you apparently have like such funny things happen like um, like you have like bots, spam bots in game okay. who message other players, which apparently is a thing in that uh, game, for um, like, I don't know for, for what it is, but like some weird links or whatever. And the team can't do anything about it because the only person who is who has the the permissions to, to ban accounts is on vacation currently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Wow>. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and um, the Twitter account of that game basically announced a character to be released overseas soon for the next banner mm. and then a few hours later he made another tweet and said oh sorry i posted the, the wrong character this is the right character <laughs> and then a few hours later he said again oh shit it, it was the wrong character again it's actually this character amazing <laughs> and stuff like this apparently it's a very fun uh, a very fun mismanaged um, gacha game overseas because the team is way too small which is kind of funny when I see the stories because I know like a few people on Discord who play it and they share those it's stories like all the time. For new characters. 
Yeah, you're getting... I mean, you will get them eventually, I guess, but <laughs> they apparently screwed up the order or something. I don't know. Um, That's... by the way, there have been questions. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, some questions again, right. Milson asks, Hello, do your game... Uh, do your game have any automated tests? No. And no. I don't think so, no. Though, I mean, it's actually one thing I was thinking of maybe adding at least a little bit, like for some edge cases. Like, for instance, you can mm. actually start the game without it crashing. That would be something that might be possible to test uh, automatically <laughs> and nice to have to know before I release anything. Mm. Just as an example. Okay, this is actually really messed up here. Got another question. Um, uh, so, just a suggestion. After watching you animate, perhaps it would be a good idea to implement an in-game perspective preview panel on the animation editor. Uh, I mean, there is how like exactly this. do you mean that? This is basically already in-game. Yeah, it is already in in game. I mean, this mm. is the perspective that you have in game. It's just that we mm. can rotate it in ways right. that you couldn't in the game. But this is exactly how the animation will look like in the game. I mean, of course, zoomed yep. out a lot. Um, so yeah. Um, just remember, guys. Or I mean, if you didn't know, just imagine. In CrossCode, we didn't have any kind of preview for animation, yeah. for animation edi editors. So we always had to start the game and then basically test it in game in some way mm. to um, like test our animations. Yeah, pretty much. So this is like huge progress. It's all luxury, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can oh. you rotate that sort 360? Uh, wait. Oh, the, oh, you mean that uh, by a 360 degree? Um, actually, I can't, but we do have something to make that work, and it's essentially um, the split frame thing. So, I mean, flip. I can just flip the whole sword with a, an animation keyframe. But, like, you know, for this attack, the, the orientation of the sword is correct, so you don't want to flip it. That's actually how the sword is supposed to point if you slash with it. Yep. Yeah, I mean you can also hey Yui. this perspective. You, um, hey, Yui. Yui, brought, Hi, Yui. Yui brought her brought her um her pl her her Lea plush to uh, what's it called again to her gr uh, gr graduation. Yeah, yeah, I saw some photos. That was like That's, really uh, cute. That was very cute. <laughs> I hope it's uh, I hope Lea yeah. didn't get too drunk on that. On the ceremony. Okay, actually, I actually like where this is going slowly. Slowly looks in like something that might look good. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna need some big angry eyebrows doing. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Some big angry eyebrows. While swinging the sword or what? Yeah, she needs to look angry because she's attacking. Mm. <laughs> it's intimidating. <laughs> so for a spinning weapon, I need to do animation of the thing. So yeah, basically you would have a graphics animation. Mm. Like not a not a bone animation. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice to that's nice to hear. I mean, Yui. You you could have um you have this uh for the for the legs and stuff that from a different perspective you choose a different graphic, but I think it makes sense to have the control uh, over the sword with what graphic it uses at all times. Okay. Uh, Code Star Games is uh, continuing or explaining a bit like a locked perspective mini preview. So when you have the character rotated, modifying things, 
you can still have the top-down perspective view without rotating the character back to the uh, correct game perspective. I guess that would be nice, but it's also difficult to do, so not sure. Yeah, you basically need a second instance of the game running at the same time. Yeah. That's tricky. Uh, which makes it a bit tricky and a, a, a second canvas. And we can we can use the tabs um, because I think the tabs don't really switch the canvas, right? The what canvas do you mean? Is still the same one. Yeah, it's, it's the still same. Uses the same canvas object, hmm. and it just changes out the the content basically. Yeah, yeah. But for a second view, you would have a second canvas and. I don't know if the. I mean, essentially, you need to uh, uh, reconstruct the whole rendering engine for a second canvas. Um, or you kind of like do some trickery where you say, I just render the whole thing in a different point on the screen, unrelated to the current camera view. That might be an option, but it's also tricky. Um, I mean, there would be ways to hack that, I think. I think what would be nice is just to have a key where you can switch to the default perspective and then back to the previous perspective. Yeah. Or a, a button you just hold and while you're holding it, you're in the default perspective. I think that would be much more practical. I know. Like, I'm working on animations and I'll do the features that I think I would need. <laughs> I mean, unless now Thomas starts working on stuff and so makes a few suggestions, then I will listen to him. But usually, like, the people creating the assets are the ones that request the features, not other people. Yeah, but it's a nice consideration. So maybe that's a bit too much. Funnily enough, in many MMOs, that sword would be a dagger, and the swords would be as big as the character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> we can increase the swords up pretty easily, actually. Um, mm. But, you know, I think that size of the is appropriate. I mean, it's like if you look at, Bre uh, at Breath of the Wild, I mean, Link's sword is much larger than that, I think. Yeah, I mean. We need to see how it works with the gameplay, yeah. what range you would need. Well, when am I getting my layup, Josh? <laughs> <Joking. laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we have never, um, we haven't really planned to to, to sell layup clutches, right? Well, I think, I, I think, I think Deck Thirteen was that. considering something. For like the remaining stock, but it's like it's pretty never, they never managed to get anything to work but I there. But need a big store to compensate things. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you could right. always make the sword bigger for like special attacks or stuff. Um, Poet is actually saying something interesting. Mm. Where you have a nice uh, cross-code modding community, you can hear out their suggestions. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Like, I don't know. I'm not a fan of feature requests. I'm just saying this out loud mm. right now, because like, at some point, I just want to make progress with the game. Like, we'd already put a lot of time in these tools and... Uh, like, I'm not, like, uh, really aging to get more feature requests to make the tools even better and better, especially from people who are not really directly involved in development. It's like, I'm not interested. I want to, I don't know, like, um, yeah. it's mostly about just making a game first. Yeah, that's very fair. That's very correct. I mean, we're already at a really mm. good point with very well working system.
Ah. <lacht> Final Fantasy 14 Bi Fanbase Biggest Fan Feature Request Bud Sliders. <lacht> uh, just was a thought that came to mind. Lots of times when I did 3D modeling in the past, I would have the front view camera open, but then I have the autographic camera open as well. Are you mean when you have that you basically have a split? Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just I don't really know if we need it in this. I mean, I can see how this is useful, but it's just I know it's like it's not an easy feature. It would be definitely more work to implement this. And the thing is, um, I am not sure. In I mean, for 3D modeling, definitely, it's definitely super mm. useful. But I'm not sure how useful it is for this game because even though it is 3D in many ways, it's it still um, works on mostly one perspective. That's true. At least in game, and you don't need to model all that much because, like, the backside isn't that important, for example, or many things. I don't know. We will see when we need it, I guess. <laughs> mm. Also, Felix, something big yeah. happened. Did you know? Yeah, what happened? Take a guess. Okay, don't take a guess. It's uh, VTuber related, I don't want to mention that. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, it's VTuber related, but I will I will pivot the the topic into a games related quest, uh, thing. Okay. Uh, Ho uh, Hololife English has like the second generation with five new talents, and they are great. It's really great. It's okay. really really good because they basically are great in their own way. And they fill like gaps that haven't been filled before, like okay. a great ASMR streamer, for example. Very important. And and a, stre a streamer who I think would would be really your taste, Felix. Oh no. Because um, you know, like the stereotypical complaint that oh no, I don't like listening to uh, girl streamers who are like high pitched and scream all the time. Mm. Yeah, I can That's see like, that. And she's. She's basically the opposite of that in many ways. She has like a very mature, uh, very attractive radio voice, I would almost say. And she is she has like this very dry, dry humor all the time. It's really good. And um, she's played like I think I don't know if it was planned or not. Uh, she played two um, Slav indie games, basically. So indie games from uh, Slavic countries like Poland mm. or something. Uh, two uh, who I was always really interested in too. Like um, the first one is uh, Super Hot, which I think you've heard about before, right? Yeah, Super Hot. Super Hot, like this. Super Hot, Super Hot. It's like <laughs> super interesting. Um, and the second one she played was uh, Frostpunk. Mm. Have you heard of that one? I think I heard the name once, I'm not sure. It's um, by the same development team who also did uh, this War of Mine. And it's like, it's basically a game, a, a building strategy game. Like, like let's say like the Settlers kind of, or, or Anno, but in a very uh, dark scenario. Like you're basically in this uh, alternative not future, past, more like, uh, where the world got covered in snow because there's basically a new ice age mm. or because of some volcanic eruptions and things like that. I and see. It's really, uh, and it's really great uh, with her as a streamer because she <laughs> she basically plays and comments it as if she was like some really, really strict, uh, really strict um, leader, basically, like, yeah, Child, uh, children, yes, you should work. Child labor is important for this apocalyptic future. <laughs> Things okay. like that, I really like it. Mm. But I noticed that um, 
a lot of like it's it's really a stereotype but it's kind of true that a lot of like indie games from like um eastern europe have like really dark themes like holy shit like like um from that development team for example like frostpunk mm -hmm. is really dark since war of mine is super dark it's like i was like man such a cliche but i guess it's kind of and super hot is also pretty dark pretty dark in some way even mm -hmm. though it's also really humorous but it also has some really dark scenes it's really interesting yeah dear uh i will send you some clips uh in the, in the, over the next video i'm pretty sure you will, okay. li you will like her <laughs> oh well but no it's really great so... and also um but she also saber face because it was designed by the designer of uh, umu Uh, more question, by the way. Pixel art butt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Give pixel art butt. Uh, can you disable head look at camera and do I think we can override in which direction the head is looking. What do you mean? Like, in case um, you don't want the had to rotate with an animation you can i mean the the, anim the head is just a separate bone you can make it rotate in whatever direction you want it's just that like uh, the rotation is just approximated with eight directions um so it doesn't rotate with the camera i mean it does rotate with the camera as i mean as you can see it's just that it's approximated with eight directions and if I want to change the direction, I can just rotate the head. I just click here and rotate it in whatever direction I want to. So. Uh, we got a subscription by Spaghetti Midget. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Hello, I love cross code. There is a Filipino martial art named Kali. Maybe it could serve for inspiration for your animations. I got a YouTube with it I can share if you, if you want to. I mean, you mm. can share uh, YouTube links if you want to, as long as they are not not safe for work for some reason. Oh, by the way, guys, the okay. Fun Here's a new animation oh, yeah. that yeah. I just made. Let's see new if animation. it works. Then now the nice thing is, if everything works well, so this is like the old animation. If I go now here and say, I take new one, save, and here's the new animation. Okay, the sweep isn't working. But that is makes sense because I have to attach the hook yet. Um, so let's attack the hook. Attach the hook. Um, let's see. It starts here. Okay. And here we stop the sweep. Oh, we have new subscriptions. Oh, yeah. Another subscription yes. by Plutier MK2, who subscribed for two months, saying love Crosscode and love the deaths even more. Keep it up. Thank you very much. So. Did, we, did we mention Spaghetti Midget? 
I think I did mention the subscription, yes. Yeah, uh, Felix okay. mentioned. Felix mentioned. Then I, yeah. I missed it. <laughs> oh, someone shared mm -hmm. That's... an a Filipino martial yeah, the... art with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, they they asked me about it a bit bit further up, so I can share it. I'm just gonna watching it in the meantime. It just has like uh, one or two minutes of, um, or like a minute of like loud music playing before it starts properly. Mm, so uh, it still doesn't work. What is wrong here? Yeah, I will. I will. I will watch it on the side. Uh, by the way, a little fun fact. Um, did you guys know that Crosscode was made by two people, one coder and one artist? <laughs> really impressed. <laughs> yes. Oh, that that uh, that fighting style looks really cool, but very close range. What? Like you have yeah, very, yeah, right. Very tight movements around your body. Yep. Which one it do looks you mean? A bit more like. Uh, I assume I assume the fighting style is like um, more based on like machete fighting or something, because machete fighting tends to be very um, short ranged close movement. Mm -hmm. mm. I've I've watched a video about about machete fighting like a few weeks ago. That's why. Uh, so why does this not work? Very interesting interactions with with both your hands between them. Yep. I also like that they are doing this in like a gym gym hall that has like the, that looks like your typical school gym hall with like. Hand, yeah. uh, handball, uh, handball. I'm thinking. Have there been any any movies that use that fight, uh, that fighting style? Because I mean, it's hard to say because usually they don't. Uh, it, I often found that that movies use a lot of different fighting styles, but they never. But you don't really notice it unless you know the fighting styles beforehand. Mm. Yeah, they mix and match a lot <clears throat> because. But I feel uh, a lot of um, like in media fighting sites would be try to be flashy with bigger movements and especially yeah, when course. you have um, when you also have stunt performers, you probably need um, a lot of uh, how do you call it um, like a preview of your move you're gonna do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what is that's a word for it. Uh, so you, so the other one knowing which move is coming next, and they can dodge it basically. So ah, so react. you mean like, I mean, you you might have choreography basically, Robert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since this is very on speed and mm -hmm. uh, short and tight movements, you don't have those big. Um... Yeah, but there's a word for it. We use swings? it too for our animations. Uh, ah, you mean um, beginning of an animation? Yeah, telegraphing. Yes, exactly. Mm. I mean, yeah, but, but but that's basically like like every more realistic fighting style is. Ah, um, okay, now works. Damn. Okay, then I need to fix. There was an issue here. Oh, it looks nice. I think I like it. Uh, but 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 let's answer a question first. Uh, will the game have a system when players got bashed to the ground or thrown in the air? Like the crosscode bull enemy attacking uh, Juno. Bash to ground ah, you mean, or uh, in the air, like you might. You mean like a stun, like a stun phase or a stun stun status, basically, where you go to fly to the ground first. I mean, it's not I'm planned as far as I know. Thing. I mean, there will be like a stun state, but not sure if there will be. Nah, probably no rectals. I think that's overkill. Yep. We might have uh, more. The... Okay, so actually will now, the, hmm? will the swords have scabbards? Uh, scabbards? I mean, most likely not. I think we're not really planning to have scabbards for the swords. Nah, because they will disappear anyway magically, so they don't need sca You don't need scabbards. 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 Right. Okay, so one animation is done. Actually, I like I like how this looks from behind. 
looks very dynamic. Yeah. I mean, I like I like this this leg uh, pose much more than the one you had before. So I just need to change the other one. But the nice thing is I can actually just more or less flip the two poses, I think. <laughs> and I have the other animation. Let's see how that works. Just infinite combo it. <laughs> okay. Will the map be divided in square sections like Crosscode? Will there be a world map? I mean... We will see, basically, <laughs> but um, I mean, it it won't be a world map like you have in like some RPGs like Final Fantasy. But um, there will most likely be an overworld, like a menu-based world map, yeah, basically. Yeah, we uh, RD actually like worked Postcode. on an editor that hmm. basically uh, breaks down a whole map into a smaller graphic in into an overview. Uh, side of it mm -hmm. and those can then be attached together so they build a bigger bigger map you uh, the, he did the same thing for um for cross code but it wasn't in the game it was just when you took screenshots of the maps you could um attach them like a puzzle and make a bigger area out of it so they mm. they always attach and um, that view or a similar view uh, will be in the game, I think. That's the plan. And mm. I mean, yeah, the maps are, well, not square, but they're rectangles. But um, you won't be able to always see the edge of the map. Um, so. It, shouldn't feel like they're rectangles. Yep. Because we need to we, we need to be a bit more creative about the border. Uh, in Crosscode we had these invisible borders basically or invisible walls, right? Mm. And we won't have them in Terra. So we need to have more natural cliffs uh, and obstacles blocking blocking you from going off the map um, so it should be it should feel a bit more wild and natural yeah pretty much Uh -huh. The biggest uh -huh. question uh -huh. I have is, will there be plenty of delicious vegetation to chop through, like in Crosscode? <laughs> that was so satisfying. <laughs> Definitely, right? <laughs> Definitely. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. <laughs> and Don't change I hope, your I hope we, will, we, we can make it even more fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will already, I mean, the platforming and stuff will already be more fun, I think, because I As think I think yeah, like the new reduced. jumping system. I can I think I can demonstrate this a little bit more later, um, because I think it already works really well personally. Or at least I have the same effect I had with Crosscode, where I sometimes just start the game and jump around for ten minutes without doing anything. That's usually a good sign. I mean, that means it's fun. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, mm -hmm. just imagine you have different weapons and what you can do with them. Just yeah. play it out in your head. <laughs> uh, can we upgrade or make custom weapons with unique designs? Um, I think that's something we're still talking about, right? I mean, like the, like the way weapon upgrades work, uh, we will see. I mean... Um... 100% like the, the, like there is some way like one goal about this project is that there will be more options for equipment I mean that's one thing we saw was kind of like a downside of cross code that you have like too few options um, to uh, equip your character in a meaningful way to kind of like custom I think there were like those eight equipment slots and we are thinking of ways to increase the amount of options so we can have more meaningful rewards um 
and like adding slots to your weapon is one big idea that we definitely consider i mean it's probably what we will do it's not set in stone yet but at least I think that's what most of us have, have most of us have in mind right now. Will there be a character creator or is it defined main character like cross code? Defined main character. Main character. Yes. But the big difference is that like stuff like um um stuff like I will have it in a minute like uh, custom skins are actually much more feasible this time so mm. that's something that definitely can happen so what is this oh, it's just a hook exactly and i mean it's a, again a story driven single player game mm. um so it's important for us to have our character in focus. Yes. And if you can make your own. I always think it takes a little bit away from it. Because then you're not playing that character, you're playing your own character. Yep. Uh, will you be able to jump over incoming attacks with the new jump system? Nah. The thing is, like, the new just jump is like, one big thing about cross code, um, and the same is true for Terra, is that jump height is, like, very, very low. Like, let me show you how you can actually jump. That's it. Like, the only thing you might be do dodging that way is kind of like, a, like, I don't know, like, some, some dashing real-life mice. You might be able to dodge that, but that's about it. So like your character is not marrying you. You're not. You're not. You can't re jump that high. And that's also why you don't actually jump up on stuff. That's actually different compared to cross code. You actually now climb up of things. And that's kind of like just the point. Just to kind of like drive this point home. You actually cannot jump high. You can mostly just jump a little bit. You can jump forward very much, which is essentially like the new dash. Um, you can jump on stones. You can jump far from the edge and all that. So that's possible. But you cannot jump high that much. Um, and that's why jumping over things, I mean, no, like most things are just way too, way too high for you to jump over them. So it's, it's really just, uh, the only point of having this jump is so people stop complaining about the jump button. I'm honest here. Like that's the really, that's the only point. So now you have the jump button. Like I could have decided there's no, no point in clicking that button when you don't move. But yeah, you can do that. I mean, there's some slight applications actually. If you're at the edge, normally you stop. And if you press jump and move, you actually jump down. So that's that's something you can do. And But you, the same happens if you just keep pressing. So you don't need that really for that. Um, that might I mean, be I could see, I could see that potentially be like um, very ground-based shockwave attacks, maybe, that you could jump Oof. over that are yeah. very, very... <laughs> I think that's something for Hannah's quests. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Hannah will abuse <laughs> that and people will love it. Um, God damn it, guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my prediction. Yeah. Sounds, I just had a sounds I, feasible. I, I just had an idea. I just had an idea for a special attack from some comment in chat and I can mm. and people can like and, pe and some people might might be able to guess what I what I meant. By the way, but. now I'm actually <laughs> flipping the sword. That's actually how it works. It's not read really agent mm -hmm. right now. I mean, that's probably also not something I will be able to change. Um, you just set a different frame for each animation. Like uh, the editing of frames is currently still very messy, and I actually want to work on that too. Um, that you actually can select several frames here and just change the frame animation with one operation here. Um, Mm. All the attack animations you've shown have been horizontal. Is it possible to make vertical, di diagonal, or just slightly angled sweeps? I mean, yes. The system, or is it the effect of is the effect limited to horizontal? You can actually make slightly vertical sweeps. Like right now, I just focus on making them horizontal because that's what you want in terms of gameplay. Because that's like uh, mm -hmm. the gameplay is still very much horizontal. Um, vertically isn't as important to hit things. Um, 
But that being said, right. if it doesn't look so great, we can make them. Actually, I can try uh, experiment a little with that. Let me show. Um, like for instance, let's just modify the sweep a little bit. So all I have to do essentially is like rotate this a bit down, and yep. Then it has like uh. a, sl a slight angle. Let's see how that looks. So and you see that's now actually it looks really nice. It looks nice. Depends if like the collision still works well, but you can see I can also make it a bit higher at the end. It's actually that looks really cool, more yeah. dynamic. Yeah, actually I think we might just do that. The thing is that the collision will still be very much horizontally. It kind of like it hmm. just takes like the three D vector and just projects them on the two D plane and just estimates the height like taking the center so you don't really have accurate 3d collision because that's much more difficult to compute and i think it's not really that relevant because you actually do want to have like uh, animations that are um more horizontal uh, because again that's sort of relevant for the gameplay okay so. real talk now will we be able to dual wield weapon <laughs> mm, no, but there will be I mean, certain not weapons that, that, that might be... Um, that might look like dual wielding, but that would be like um, their own weapon types. Yeah. Mm. It's not like you can like whip out like a sword and a spear and then <laughs> dual, dual wield them for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That's pretty unrealistic. Okay. I mean, so I mean uh, there, was, there was a Soul Calibur character who did that. Ah. <laughs> uh -huh. This, this thing doesn't... Cool Ju Juno, Juno Zoro style. Let's go. <laughs> okay, let me yes. close and open this again. She uses like a spear in, in one arm, sword in, in another, and then like an axe <laughs> in her mouth or something. <laughs> okay. Uh, so... So, you, so you don't need 3D collisions as Juno will not chop heads off lights. <laughs> okay. So let me do this with yeah, the length, so this one looks yeah, more the, sweet. The collision will mm, be very nice. similar to... Uh, how it works in crosscode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just make the divide length uh, smaller. Screw it. We do have enough. We can show a lot of particles, so let's make this more mm. expensive. Okay. Um, ah, this looks so nice now. Ah, yeah, actually, yep, I, I, I think really I agree. Good. I think we make we will use slightly diagonal sweeps. Um, they mm. probably won't have a big impact on the collision. It just looks cooler. Um, mm -hmm. But then let me adapt the animation as well a little bit. But mm -hmm. it's actually it's actually good that I do this now because you want to have like the always from the low to up because I think that looks good like low up, and then the other way because then you have a nice cross shape, you know. That's true. Like a cross. Yes, that's true. Like a cross code shape. Um, oh. A cross code shape. Will we be able to fight unique bosses with loot drops? Uh, you mean like r like randomized procedural stuff? If so, then most likely not. But uh, there will be bosses in the new game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there will be bosses, most definitely. <laughs> Better yet, how about dual wielding bows? I mean, <laughs> it reminds me of this one joke in uh, 8-Bit Theater, where someone was like <laughs> uh, a tuple, uh, no, no, not a tuple, octu octuple wielding bows somehow or because dual, he was using dual, dual wielding shields yes 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 that would also <laughs> be a good thing dual wielding shield i think yeah i think you could do that in like uh fantasy star in older fantasy star games mm -hmm. which was a good idea for like your uh, spell casters because i didn't really need weapons all that much mm. Really <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, will this video game have gameplay? Hmm, we'll see. <laughs> uh, a little bit. A little bit. Um, uh, Flora, we talked about like um, fighting styles a bit a few minutes mm. ago. Um, mm. Yeah, um, that all reminds me of um, especially movie fighting styles. There is like this one movie or like two movies rather, that were uh, famous for having very realistic uh, sword fighting scenes. In fact, so realistic that they were actually somewhat dangerous to shoot because they had to be really careful with the, um, oh. with the movement, of course, because mm. like 
if you try to fight realistically, you also try more to hit your opponent, obviously, because in movie fighting, you usually try to cross blades a lot. And if it's done badly, you always see like, oh yeah, person one is actually hitting, is hitting, and then aiming at the other, pe pe uh, at his opponent's blade, instead of that, uh, instead of aiming at the opponent and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, was usually or, done. Like, uh, like uh, fencing in video games and uh, in movies doesn't look like real fencing at all. Yes, because in fencing, exactly. You don't really cross blades. You try to stab the enemy. Hmm. And, right. Uh, and, and the fight goes like f three to five seconds or something. Uh, actually, yeah, it depends. Um, in that movie that I, um, that I that I saw a video about, mm -hmm. the fighting did uh, did take a bit longer, but also because it wasn't just sparring fencing; it was about uh, dueling, like real life life or death dueling, basically. And those duels actually did last a few minutes often, because Obviously, people were careful. They didn't rush in. They tried to poke a bit, basically, and try to um, hold back a bit. And then, and um, okay, it it weren't really often duels to the death. It was more like your typical duels over honor till first blood, basically. You try to stab your opponent, and then he can basically give up because uh, honor has been uh, re retained or whatever. Mm. And um, <laughs> The movie was actually <laughs> the movie uh, was actually also called The Duelist, and it's like um, if you search it on on YouTube, you should be you should find yeah you should find the duel uh, scenes pretty quickly. And it's also really interesting because again, just like this this video, you don't have like those big sweeping cuts, at least not with. Um, experienced opponents they always try to go for very quick attacks that also utilize the most of the range of your swords mm. it's really yep. interesting like compared to like your usual mm. fancy sweeping uh, sword fights yep yep i mean that, that totally makes sense but you know makes sense obviously we make we make shiny fights that look shiny yeah of, cool. of course i mean it's it's very <laughs> That's okay. JRPGs. In JRPGs, you might sometimes find very fancy moves that might not be fully, uh, fully realistic. A big door is kind of like a double shield, right? A big what? A, a, big, a big door? door. You know, yeah. the castle doors with two swings? Yeah, it's true. You just put one on each of your arms. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so second one. I, can, I kind of want to see a character. <sighs> you guys, a look at this. Ah, man. Swing, swing. Swing, swing, swing. Oh, nice. That's cool. Huh? Ah, something about the second DM post doesn't look too great yet. Ah, no. need to fix that. Yeah, like the, the aim armor isn't straight enough yet. Will there be laser swords and gun swords? How about making gun sword more heavier? Um, what? I don't think that's kind of the game we're gonna make. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, probably there will be guns in of, in some form, but not like probably not like traditional. I don't know. I actually don't know. It's more of a... How do you say that? Sorry, I'm busy. It's not busy. like cross code. <laughs> Oh, right, Platypus uh, Pamera asks, and and the PvP crosscode. I uh, don't think that was ever an idea. 
to begin with. No. No. No, no. It's a single player game. I mean, the only PvP is like in lore PvP, more or less. Mm. In fact, I'm hoping, I'm actually very glad that the next game will have probably not like a PvP like in Crossco because that mm. was like one of the more annoying experiences of Crossco, like how like trying to make a well balanced fight that kind of like made sense uh, as a PvP fight. It was really difficult, and you know, people obviously complained because Apollo is such a cheater. Um, <laughs> of course. Okay, that looks like a better end post, but this one might be a bit too high. Okay, let's see this. Oh yeah. Yeah, the F zero mu music goes hard. Mm hmm. It does. Huh? But uh -huh. rip Captain Falcon. Rip Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I think the has to go further back. Uh, by the way, Laura, have you are you up to date with the what if stories? Uh, not yet. I haven't seen okay. the last episode um, mm -hmm. because yeah, Katinka is still uh, she she's busy, so we're gonna watch it maybe tomorrow or Monday. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It was pretty funny because. Um, Without spoiling much, but it's, it was basically the kind of concept you would expect from like this kind of series, because because it's a very big like oh what if this, and then it's like yeah of course things change a lot. It's like mm. <laughs> really. I like the I like the second episode a lot. That was pretty fun. Uh, the Black Panther Star Lord yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was really. I mean, it was also a bit silly how they. Uh, handled uh, Thanos in a way, but it was funny. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was still fitting in a way. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a bit on the nose, nice. but yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, those kind of in this kind of concept, of course, it will be very much like winking into the camera a lot, like, haha, get it? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I mean, it's not what you expect, kind of. Uh, Uh, well, that is incredibly satisfying to watch. I was thinking more along the line of the pirate pistols, the old lead ball and flintstock styles that take an age to load, so they'd be purely situational. Um, uh, oh oh no, uh, I, I think they are referring to this one um, a video that was posted okay. by Kovac. Because Kovac posted like an. Yeah, yeah, it's it's oh, yeah. Kovac's mm -hmm. answer to the the classic Indiana Jones scene with the sword versus sword versus saber. Yeah, it was not sword versus saber, sword versus gun. That's one of the iconic scenes. Such a good scene. Okay, so that works. I think the sweep is a bit too far outside, but that's because like the hook has a different coordinate, has to be closer to the arm. Oh. Okay, that's now more accurate. Hello. Uh, 
-hmm. Yeah, Kovac, I was thinking like actually our game would play in like an age okay where there would be black powder and therefore guns but uh i don't know i i kind of feel like they don't fit into the setting so much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. okay now right. i see actually see some problem like the characters moving forward too much for this leg pose so i think i will modify mm -hmm. the way the legs and see if that works so they need to be more backwards after all um yeah the thing is uh with uh Uh, human mm. human enemies it would need human enemies to have guns unless birds unless eyes <laughs> uh, we we, uh, we want to go a bit more serious than crosscode so we can't give birds guns again <laughs> uh, right. I mean, oh, but who kinder, knows? but then again. Then again. Well, wait. We at don't least want... not like traditional guns. Well, at least not traditional birds, let's say, like this. <laughs> Oh man, I tell you, the, those legs there are kind of annoying. This time, Gun's gonna have birds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Gun birds with guns shooting birds. With guns. Shooting birds with guns. Those birds are probably soundtrack. insane because you can't hit them half the time. That is something mm. we are aware of and will fix in Project Terra. Yeah. It will be much better. Most, yeah. Most definitely, you most likely at least. You have, have like a distant, uh, how do you call that? Distant weapons. Ranged weapons. Ranged weapons. Ranged weapons. Yeah, ranged weapons will behave different to cross code and it will help you to hit enemies that you usually couldn't reason crush out. So that's yeah, that's the, kind of like the idea. The difference is that they can actually hit something above you. Yeah. Unlike the balls in cross code. I mean, honestly, <laughs> to be hundred percent sure, I still need to test if that control scheme works, as I imagine it. But that's true. Of hopefully... course, everything everything we're talking about is right now just in our heads and on some some yeah. sheets and stuff. Um, we still need to test things, implement them, see if they okay. work. It's purely based on like intuition and and knowledge. Like okay, that. that looks better, I think. Okay. I mean, that, that looks kind of plausible with the legs now, I think. It also looks great when you stand, but it also looks good when you kind of like move forward. Nice. I like it. Yeah. Those are the things that you probably will tweak for a long, long time until we are satisfied. But, you know, at least I think it looks better than what we had before this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like the sweep needs to be improved. Hmm. 
Mm. I'm just gonna post this scene in Discord. I'm uh, not not necessarily for Felix to watch because it's like that's. Let's do a timestamp. Nah, it's one and a half minute, but still. It's like one of the, those relatively realistic sword fights. <laughs> I think if you give the editor to your CC community, you will have 1,500 plus animations for Juno in a week. <laughs> that yeah, might happen, yeah. True. Oh right, I think I, I saw that um uh like I like I like to watch um what's it called? The YouTube channel that uh Lips? analyzes uh uh Skelegrim? Mm -mm -mm. uh, okay no Skelegrim is more of a of a of a HEMA channel. I watched but he also does uh, today. It's Corridor Crew. Corridor Crew. Ah, they have, okay. Uh, the stuntmen react, and sometimes it's VFX artists react, um, or animators react. And I think they went over the, that fight that you hmm? posted, and they were hmm? talking exactly about that. That like, usually in, what well, basically what what we've said before, in other hmm? movies it's not very realistic, and this was. Pretty dangerous to film. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. that fight I that also like the touch that. Um, th yeah, that um, that's something that. Should is, I watch that, it that, on that, stream? Uh, Scala... I actually didn't watch what? it yet. That 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 last video that I posted. I want to see. That. Yeah, it's it's like one and a half minutes long from the timestamp, and I don't think it's. I sh it shouldn't be a problem <laughs> considering that. <laughs> it's just a very sh short video, and it has been on YouTube since. Mm. Ah, over five years. <laughs> I mean, I've um, I first watched a video by Skellogrim on it, mm. who's like mostly a HEMA and um, weapon martial arts and a bit of like medieval combat channel. And he also explained like the historical context a bit and how it's like really well done. How um, this is like a fight between an officer and some civilian, basically. And the officer most apparently um, um, basically how you how you call it wanted like a duel with that civilian guy because mm. <clears throat> of some slight that he perceived and the person who who, who gets challenged mm. always ha can choose the weapon basically and they're fighting with those uh, civilian small swords Mm. Because those are the weapons that the civilian will have the, the best chance in um, fighting with, because those are not military weapons, mm. but civ but civilians often have some training with them. For example, but mm, you still see that the guy with the mustache, um, he's the military guy, yeah. he's still way more secure in what he does and way more yeah. confident in his sword fighting. Yeah, compared it's, to the it's over really quick like yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I mean that's usually how it, battles it, work in real life i think it's yeah not, yeah not like right. 500 hp and you can like hit a few times and <laughs> still keep moving um, yeah yeah right i mean they, they they do spend some time like a minute like uh, poking at each other a bit because you want to be careful while fighting yeah you want to uh, wait for an then, opening hmm? no, trade an opening but then, when uh, stuff actually happens, it's over quickly because it it basically often ends after one attack, especially in the duels that are supposed to be uh, to first blood. And like that um, that wound he got there, that mm -hmm. could potentially be deadly in the long run, not immediately, but uh, which one? You mean the first one or the last one? Probably both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you need to thing is, you need to carefully heal it over weeks. Hmm? 
Because yeah. I think the first, I think the implication is that after the first wound, he could have just given up because it was first blood, and he could have just surrendered and declared his loss. Yeah. And that wound, potentially, he could have survived pretty well, unless it really, unless you, unless he really got an infection. But it was just like a scratch, like his hand was wounded. But the second one, I think it was actually said in the story that he died from that, because. Yeah, that um, I think the civilian was actually the son of a mayor or something, and that's why the, him dying the duel was actually a big deal because it caused some problems, which was also true in history because um, dueling like that was actually um, banned in the army during uh, Napoleon's times because mm. they 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 lost too many officers to it. Too many officers mm. were constantly du dueling each other for bullshit and died <laughs> oh, while dueling, which of wow. course left left like um, holes in the in the chain of command. Because yeah. if if an officer dies, you need to find a replacement for him for that unit. Otherwise, that unit won't be able to 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 be active, and that officer might not be as competent as the previous officer because he needs to know all the people first and stuff like that. And that, of course, this becomes a problem. <laughs> um, question, a very, very long one. Uh, do you know the Smash games? No, no actually. Never we have never heard of the, of the Smash Burgers. What is Smash? Smash Brothers Can you eat that? I know Smash Burgers. <laughs> They're like, that tasty. Oh, that, that's the burger oh, oh. on a Smash? No, no, uh, Felix. It's, yeah. it's smash, smash Your Mum. <laughs> okay. Uh, they you. use a neat dynamic in which if one receives a strong enough attack, you are forced into a knocked out stage, which goes, which, in which you are a, 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 uh, able to roll to the are side to stand up. Oh, you mean that one? Are able to, ah, you mean like the, um, basically falling to the ground to lay there for a bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah, of then course, it's a very common roll. fighting game thing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it again, I don't think it will fit much into Terra because we don't really plan to add a prone state. At least mm. to my to my knowledge, I think, I think there uh, there was an idea with like when you uh, when you block correctly, you can act faster after it mm. or something like that. Potentially, yeah, that would make sense. Maybe like when you when you block an, a strong attack, you're stunned for a little bit, but if you like perfect block it, you can immediately move out of it. Mm. I think there was an idea like that from from RD. I don't remember mm -hmm. that, but I mean, sure. We're gonna get um, some tea and something to eat. Yeah, okay. Okay. all right. That's a very good idea. So oh, Felix, mm -hmm. about those VTubers. Oh no, yeah? You know, <laughs> yeah, nothing really. Um, just wanted to say, oh yeah, the new generation is good, but I don't really have much to say. Uh, do you consider making some technical devlogs like for CrossCode from time to time maybe? Those were awesome. Technical devlogs? I mean, oh, maybe. Um... Like explaining, Would be nice, like but exactly. yeah, like it depends if we, <laughs> if I feel like I have the time for that. The thing is, like, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, talking about some of the stuff would be nice, I guess. Yep. These times are kind of like feel yeah. there's like more pressure in the development because, like, in the crossword, in the beginning, it was really just a hobby, and it was like a part-time thing. But now Terra is from the very beginning is like a full time thing and that kind of like feels like there's more pressure to it. That's why there's um a bit yeah. more reluctant spending thing. time on that. Felix, yeah? the government is briefing down on next. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, not really. The government is break is briefing down on next. <laughs> <laughs> it's the government. They got the government. It's too late now. The Feds. The, the Feds, yeah. 
we are we are taking too much time with the money that we got, and now the feds are coming and being like. Oh no! <laughs> BK öffnen sie. BK öffnen sie. Oder ne, BKA. Ah, I mean, from from what ministry uh, uh, were, uh, were the grants again? Verkehrsministerium. Verkehrsministerium, yeah. yes, I was The one I was who, who was so conscious with money when it comes to this, uh, this PKV mount thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Felix, they, they will send their, their um, most elite forces after us when we don't, don't uh, use the money wisely. Mm -hmm. The Cobra 11 Autobahn police. Oh no, it's over then. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure those also work for the for the um, security mi mi ministry or whatever. But I mean, <laughs> less funny. <laughs> that scared me. How far are you in development? Uh, exactly 17 percent. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask. Don't ask those kind of questions. They are impossible to answer. Very um, difficult to answer, at least. Uh, Felix. Who's your f who's your favorite new uh, English talent in the Hollow Life generation, and why is it Crony? Who's Crony? Okay, that's that's actually my uh, question for me. Uh, Crony is actually the one I told you about, the one who has like the very mature and ah. calm voice. Okay. And who plays like those Slavic Sla Slav indie games. <laughs> like she's she's super funny. I, I have to send you a few short clips. You will like okay. her. The one with the saber face. And she also has big tits, Felix. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Hi, Flora. What are we talking and it's talking about, about tits again. <laughs> I know. I was asked VTubers. about my favorite oh, Hololive. Hololive. I was mm. asked about my favorite Hololive EN talent, and I was specifically asked why is it, is it crony. Mm -hmm. And as it so happens, she does have big badoinka doink. All right. Okay, so um, I actually want to talk a bit more about how Terra will play differently than CrossCode in terms of yes. jumping. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, let me see. Okay, yes. it works here in big view. So, uh, like, um, as I said, like, you cannot jump really that high, but instead you're actually now climbing. Um, at least, well, if, if you can actually jump on stuff, the game will realize that and you just jump. But if it's too high, like this stone here, you actually start, you actually start climbing on things. And this climbing is actually very dynamic. It also happens if you jump at something and you kind of like reach the edge, but you're already below it, the game will realize, oh, you could just climb up there. And that kind of like makes you climb up things if you don't quite make the jump. So here's actually some way where you can test this pretty effectively. Um, like for instance here, if I just drop down, but I keep moving and actually touch the edge, um, of this other wall, which is actually too far away, the game will realize, oh, you probably want to climb up and then you just climb up again. And that happens not always, but most of the time, I guess. So, but um, this also works for kind of like far jumps. So like if you do this jump correctly, it works. Oh, I actually didn't. You see, I actually was climbing there. You can do these jumps like normally, um, but if it doesn't work like exactly, like here, for instance, you can still climb them up, so it kind of like makes doing those jumps a bit more tolerant compared to cross code. Um, and probably the biggest difference is that you cannot just easily walk down by mistake. Um, when you walk to an edge, it's actually different to cross code because by cross code you would al always always jump automatically. In Terra, it, you actually stop, and depending on how far how far you will fall down. Um, you will essentially wait for a long time. Let me skip that. Or not. Okay. That was short enough to, to be tolerated. Um, so if you go to the edge, it will stop. Um, if it's like a, a narrow, like a small fall like this, you will just stop for a very, very short time and jump immediately because then it's less annoying because that's like one fall that you can easily undo by jumping up again. Um, but like for those edges, you wait for a longer time. And if you actually do want to jump, you have to explicitly dash. That's a big difference. In cross code, dashing means you would just fall down the cliff. 
but in Terra is exactly the opposite. If you dash at an edge, you do the far jump. And that gives you essentially more control. Like if you if you jump and you land and you keep pressing, you do not automatically jump like would be in cross go, but instead you will stop and you have to explicitly press the button again to do another jump. And that kind of like makes gives the, the jumping more control. It's like less automatically more explicit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's essentially how it looks in practice. It, like it also kind of like plays pretty much as quickly as cross code. It's just that you need to press something to do the far jump. Um, and yeah, like combined with the climbing, it's like more tolerant when you do arrows. Now here's an example where you just jump and you climb up very quickly by uh, automatically without pressing anything. Climbing upwards still happens automatically, so you don't need to press anything. Um, also, like one big difference is like certain jumps which would be impossible in cross code actually do work in Terra. Like here, I'm actually if you see closely here, I'm, I think three tiles above the ground. This one is actually four tiles above the ground. In cross code, you would not be able to do this jump, but in Project Terra, it actually works because you can just climb up the gap. So that's um, those are like the the differences essentially. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it fits pretty well so far, I think. Yeah, also works with props already. Okay, so one thing I want to change now is uh, for Yuno's animation. You might notice how she's not looking at the right direction, but we can actually change this. Um, there's a way how we can tweak the eyes for each frame. Uh, that's like the last thing I want to do for the stream, and I think then it's I think it's about time to to probably end that stream. I don't want to stream for too long. We also want to mm. raid Yuyan. Um, but right. let me let me fix the eyes still. So here, this one looks good. But here, uh, let me go to the normal here. So here, Wait, let's go to the eyes, frame animation, look left or right, right it was. In uh, in a bit of different words, what uh, Felix just uh, said, in cross code, you were sometimes able to, uh, like you get basically two jumps. You had a jump where you can go mm. one uh, one layer higher, mm. and then you have the jump where you jump off uh, off a cliff, mm. and then with a far jump you were you weren't able to get higher. Yes. And now this is consistent. You can yeah. in both cases get one level higher. Essentially, the big difference is that uh, for the climbing up jump and the far jump, you have the same jump height. In crosscode, those were actually different. Like when you jump further, you actually had a lower jump height, and that's why it was kind of inconsistent. Um, yeah, in Terra now it is pretty much consistent. So we have to keep that in mind when designing environments because essentially there are a lot more ways you can climb things. But yeah, we can easily we, we can afford to make the maps bigger now. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah, I mean it's it's easy to avoid uh, it's easy to avoid these issues. You just need to be careful with certain things. Um, what is actually playing there? Um, we haven't talked about anime much, right? This is the inside account of what caused the Wall Street. I actually wanted to ask you both something. Uh, and uh, what like actually what actually the playing then the rhythm bot? <laughs> uh oh. Is it the time to ban Hannah again? <laughs> the bank that busts the world. That if we didn't solve things would get a huge amount worse. That was that followed hurt us all. That's like mortgages dried up. That's like what? <laughs> one hour. Okay, let's just skip that. I don't know. It's not the right thing. Force skip, please. Okay. Alright. Another thing to skip. Oh boy.
Here we go. Thank you. And it's suspiciously quiet. Yeah, right I think now. it just le left and uh, left her a few night things in our playlist, as he does. Of course. Um, I actually wanted to ask you and uh, Hannah if you want to watch the uh, Witcher anime together. Wait, there's a Witcher anime? Yep, there's a Witcher anime. Okay. Interesting. On Netflix. Also on Netflix. I don't know. Okay. I haven't heard yet if it's good or bad or anything. Hmm. hmm. Maybe. I'm just, no. I'm just interested. <laughs> also, um, I want to say real quick. I I watched um Owl House uh, until the newest episode, and it's amazing, and I love it, and I pressure the uh, treasure the any uh, <laughs> the characters. And uh, if you ever need a good alternative to like Harry Potter and its magic system, because uh, the author of Harry Potter is a turf, uh, look no further than Owl House. Okay, nice. So, okay, I fixed the eyes. Now you actually looks at the enemy when sweeping. For auto jumps to work, do you still have to create a special height layer in the map editor, or are all jumping issues being solved by the Z axis? For <laughs> auto jumps to work, do you still have to create a special height layer? And well, I mean, our editor looks very different in uh, like we now actually all the mapping we do now is actually based on it on a height map automatically so you actually start creating a height map and then you have all the z information ready and you, you essentially stack height maps on top of each other and that's also how we can specify graphics for the side of the walls and all that um crosscop was very different it had like a much more tile layer based system and we kind of like hacked the damn what the heck is this that's very loud um But yeah, so essentially it's it's a very different system and um, it makes it easier to create map, maps in, in the long run. So we don't have to create custom structures, but a lot of things are generated automatically. I mean, we did have the terrain editor on CrossCode that essentially helped us to generate tile layers and collision layers with different heights. Oh. Um, and this now is essentially just implicit so like like this is like now the main structure that we use a height map so you don't have those tile layers and collision layers anymore um just makes it more stable and consistent overall um and a uh, kovac yes exactly you can jump from a three box tower to a four box tower um yes. regardless of like how far away it is as long as you reach it. Well, I mean, if it's too far away, then of course you will not reach it. Yeah, yeah, of course. At, at, at some point you just drop. But. Yeah. And it's actually not... Um, it's it's a little bit tricky. So we have to actually experiment what exactly works. But if you want to jump up a level higher, you, it cannot be the same height. Actually, let me show you. I can easily show this. That's another nice thing I can demonstrate, I think. Um, let me make this one higher. So I need to restart. I think that was at four. Yes. Here we go. Um, I think this should not work, but let's see. You see, that doesn't work because um, when you actually climb, you, it's not. You cannot just climb up 16 pixels. It's like a little bit lower than that, like 12 or 8 pixels. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but if you just jump like those maximum height, when you reach that cliff, you're about 16 pixels below it. And that's not uh, not close enough, so it needs to be a bit closer. Let's see if that works. Um, so you can jump like one tower higher, but it has to be somewhat closer. 
that works actually. So just just four tiles. It's actually pretty damn flexible. Like um, even with that distance, it works. That essentially means if you want to make sure that the player cannot climb up something, you just have to make it two tiles higher. That's exactly how it was with CrossCode for, well, most things too. Yeah, this one again doesn't work because it's like too far. Those are actually eight tiles. But if I make this higher here, it should work again. You see, that works. Okay, so we made the new sweep animation. I think it looks already pretty neat. So you could say you made a sweeping progress. Yeah, I made sweeping progress. Kinder. Mm hmm. Already looks really good, man. <laughs> hey, wanted to ask if Project Terra is based on 2D isometric tile maps. Um, no, those. This is actually like we generate a 3D model based on uh, the map data structure, as you can see here. So this is like. Um, I mean, it could be just a lot of 2D maps stacked on top of each other. It would be hard to tell the difference. But if you look closely, like here, it's actually 3D models. It's just that you cannot actually rotate the camera in, in the game. So you won't notice like all those smaller inconsistencies, hopefully. I, I wanted to ask <clears throat> if Project Terra is based on 2D isometric tile map. I just answered that. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't yeah. pay attention. I'm sorry. No worries. <laughs> Happens all the time with Anna 2, so it's, it's okay. Nobody <laughs> listens to what I say. It's okay. I'm used to that. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay. I essentially got all the to do's done I wanted to do. Well, I could work, create a nice finisher animation. At least I could like improve the final frame of the finisher to be kind of like, so I call this one attack finish new. And all I will do essentially is just copy that frame. Here we go. Man. Uh, and tap on two. Man, I love skin animations. <laughs> there we go. Oh wait, that, that was actually the wrong. Oh damn, I modified the wrong one. How? What do I do now? Okay, let me. See. Mm. It's two. This one is finish. This one is finish. You nailed it. This one is actually really cheap. I just made this pose and I just rotated it around. It's not really all that great, but the thing is you, you just barely see it. So it's okay. It's so, it's so quick. Maybe let's give this one a bit more, like make it a bit more intense. I think we can't see it right now. Oh, uh, damn. Game. Yeah, I forgot oh. to. Yeah, sorry. Um, two from.
Oh, I was just wondering why that looks so weird. to add this feature for modifying frame animations finally Okay, here we have it. Uh, let me just swap out the new one. Here we go. Something about this um, sweep is weird. Oh, that makes sense. Probably should remove that ear for the. Oh wow! Yeah, that that is um. Hmm. I know that makes uh, that makes sense. why I told her no I can't do that what nothing I, I'm back hi hi back. Mm -hmm. Felix had a very good time with the songs you cued mm. he was very happy about them yeah I just what? didn't entirely oh? skip all of them I mean I've seen that already because I was already back like a few minutes mm. ago for a few four minutes but then I had to go again Oh. Okay, that works now. Whoop! Here's our Uno attack. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, sorry, Uno placeholder attack. That's not Uno. That's just <laughs> Uno placeholder. Sorry, That's fake Uno. Very important. That's <laughs> July. That's July. Yes. <laughs> it's it's July. July. <laughs> That's a July attack. June's evil twin sister. I mean Junos. Awesome. Yep. Pum 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 pum. Can we also fight with punches and kicks? Maybe. I can imagine punches and kicks being part of a combo. Yeah, for certain weapons at least. Nice timing. <laughs> yep. I always forget uh, who that character is who's singing here. Yes. That's like just a generic god in Xenoblade 2. 
who just keeps saying those things yeah. all the time during battle. That's why he became a meme. I mean, they patched it out. They patched it out. How dare, how could quickly. they? I mean, honestly, it was really yeah. annoying in practice, but you know, still, how could yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, look, here's a hit I block. remember that. Um, what does it make here? That was not edited. I remember videos of streamers um, playing that area for the first time and basically going almost insane because this battle quote was repeated over and over by, yeah. by enemies that you had to fight constantly. It was really stupid. <laughs> and Xenoblade was already pretty infamous for having way too much talking during fights because you have like six characters active, more or less. Oh wow. No, it's because, I mean, you have, I mean, in practice, it's more like three characters, but every character is basically two characters because it has like this uh, blade blade and driver system where one character is basically the weapon of, of another character mm. in a way you know actually something we probably could do is like an air attack like if you attack in the air it's just quickly sweep down a kind of like would make it look more plausible because uh, I mean right now you essentially have like the cross good approach yeah you could actually use this for strategies of jumping down enemies and then There's so much more options we have now because we can create those animations much quicker. Okay, here we go. This is it. That's uh that's what I wanted to do in the stream. We're done. Okay. Um yeah. Any last questions that I might have forgotten? Let me check the questions again. Not um, really. Timing-based combo variants would be nice. Is it possible? I think we actually planned something like that. Yeah, if they, I understood did, we do Hunt. have some plans right. for that. Stefan yes. Wright. And uh, mm. do you keep in touch with the speed-running community of CrossCode? I mean, somewhat. I mean, they yes. do have a channel on our Discord. Somewhat. Um, not, mm -hmm. not really paying close attention right now, I have to admit, but... If cool things mm. happen, um, you usually notice that. Um, I mean, we, we know a few of the prominent people like uh, Urinstein and mm. some other guys. I forgot the name, sorry. Symphonia. But, uh, Symphonia. Right, right. So here we go. This is Yuno with the sword that actually disappears now again. Wee. I mean, sorry, uh, July with a, short, with a sword. Okay. Um, all right. I guess it's time to actually do the, the raid for you, Jan. Is he still yeah. streaming? Let's have a look. Yeah. I, I think so. Um, he usually streams for quite a few hours. That's true. I hope he's yep. not playing crosscode and is frustrated about it. Um, was it M. Yeno? M. Yeno. Yeah, okay. let me check. Hmm. Me the oh, yeah. oh, he's looking at games at the uh, in the arena booth, I think. Yeah, yeah. Okay, looks yeah, nice. I need to check those out, maybe. But he maybe uh, really... he's gonna play some cross code later on. Okay, so mm -hmm. any good ideas for uh, raid text? Um, uh, I'm out of ideas as always. Uh. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Yeah. Um, right. Thank you. I'm just thinking of Ray text. Um. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um. Uh, uh, uh. Hello, fellow Zaland. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, yes. <laughs> uh, wie wär's mit Hauptsach gut gestreamt oder so ähnlich? Hauptsach gut gestreamt. Hauptsach gut. Hauptsach, warte mal, ich am. Um, Hauptsach. Uh, good. Uh, it's a uh, good guess. Can you say it like this? Yeah, I think good everybody needs to copy that one because it's impossible <laughs> to, to, to write. But yeah, the, they, um, it means like it, um, it's, it, essentially it means leaving, uh, as long as you streamed well or something. At least as you as least as long as uh, you streamed something. 
That, that's it's, what an, it means. it's a reference to the official um, Saarländisch regional motto called Hauptsache good guess, which means yeah. as long as you eat well, basically. <laughs> he will get it, I think. Yeah, yeah. I hope. I mean, he's from the Saarland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. All right, so let me just repeat that. Um, okay. Raid message is this. And then let's just start the raid. Um, and see if that works. So get ready everyone. And um, that essentially means our stream is now over. So thanks everybody for watching. Um, Thank you. Hope to see you again next time we do a stream. And otherwise check out our Discord because there are more regular streams there by Stefan most of the time at least. Um, and yes, Project Terra is moving forward. Maybe we will get to range weapons by the next stream. Um, and yeah, hope to see you again in the future. And yeah, we probably should do another blog post sometime. I think we haven't done that for some time. That's true. Yeah. True. True. Thank you okay. for all the questions and participation and all the subs yes. as well. So yeah, a lot of questions today. Interesting. Yeah, it's, you know, it was nice to have questions. So, get ready for the raid. I have to wait for the Seinfeld theme to be over. Switch is soon. So, goodbye everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye. And raid bye. starts now. Bye-bye. Don't forget the text. Doop -doop. Bop, bop, bop. Dut -dut -dut. There we go. Somebody copy the text. Okay, let's see what Yuna's up to. Oh, you actually have to follow uh, Julian to um, to make a message. I'm I'm, uh, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so, so I guess a lot of people w won't actually be able to to say the. Um, I'm on follow mode. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry I make you all follow. Me, I can't I really like watch so stream properly for some reason. Like, hey, oh no, I can I can reduce the quality. Twitch, here's our suspicious link. And um, that's what? why I did that. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm you have to have, just have to follow for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> 10, <laughs> 10 minutes. I mean, that's an effective way to get message. followers. Yeah, <laughs> It is. On the, uh, or for people to media. go go away We're again. We're actually gonna play yeah. some more cross code tonight, so <laughs> you guys seem the right crowd. Uh, do you know what, Felix? To continue I'm just gonna just gonna give you a link. Of a very representative video. You can watch it or not. <laughs> Aeon Drive. So join it's me. really uh, this is actually it's really funny actually. Uh, thing magic. You can if you want. You okay. Can, uh, let me just show you this. Online dot booth.com so has like the child labor wanna, uh, thing pretty early mm. walk alongside me in this browser multiplayer thing ah right uh, maybe i should i should check it out a hundred of cool games uh, to uh, check out that, that forgot yeah it's okay banner, like these guys that's a bunch of stands that like they didn't take enough care of s hero a top down space shooter with unique graphics and sounds <laughs> Alright, cool. Um, okay, so these are... Okay. Ja, oh, und das Stream ist dann ja quasi durch, ne? Ja. Not mm -hmm. Alles klar. Ist ein bisschen schade, dass niemand schreiben kann, niemand kann participate im Chat. Ja. Ja, ja. Das ist schon richtig. Ich meine, es ist halt, es halt, es ist halt auch 10 Minuten follow amount nicht irgendwie. 10 Minuten ist auch schon recht viel. Ich hätte gesagt, so eine Minute, fünf maximal, aber 10 ist schon krass. Ja gut, er will wahrscheinlich, er will wahrscheinlich das einigermaßen sicher haben, weil er halt auch keine großen Mo äh, Moderatoren-Team haben kann. Das kann ich mir vorstellen, aber es ist trotzdem. Uff, hat mir da so viele so solche Bots. Ja. Wir hatten eigentlich nie so große Probleme, es waren immer so ein paar. Aber wir haben ja auch immer meistens so drei Leute, die moderieren können. Ja, das stimmt. Action, -Stick -Shooter -Dating Muss sehr nervig sein, wenn man halt noch nicht so viele Leute hat, ja. Ja, Und auch der längste Game-Titel. Und ich habe die... Ja. 
Wir hatten ja immer Atlesser, die die äh, äh, Raid-Leute gut gebannt hat. Ja, ja sehr schön. Eine Mal. With me, that sounds like fun to you. Oh, cute. <lacht> so, Endlight. Watch that video on the left. <lacht> okay, it means you're playing Endlight. The game's incredible. How do we know? We wouldn't build anything that's not incredible. Further proof forward. Custom Steam Gamescom demo. Yeah, I wasn't gonna play any demos tonight, so. Uh, well, they seem to be very yeah, convinced no. of themselves. Giants up okay. Lady Evil Fantasy Action Adventure mm -hmm. game. So that's what I mean. You have like a mouth. Yo, uh, uh, Mama, here, pause here. Uh, okay, Oder wollt ihr noch weiter Musik hören? Oh, you're one of the Skyrim Nö. Giants. Du? That's awesome. Nö. Take Nö. Ich höre ich höre Stream. Gibt's eigentlich einen Bye-Sound? Nö. Ja, gibt es. Ja, wir haben Skyrim. mehrere sogar. Wir haben auch, äh... Ähm... Ich glaube, Hände, ich weiß nicht, ob du vorhin dabei warst, aber es gibt einen äh, Witcher-Anime, wo wir den zusammen gucken. Habe ich mal von gehört, ja? Können wir machen. Wie sieht der denn aus, Witcher-Anime? Wir könnten eigentlich auch mal Demon Slayer weiterschauen. Das stimmt, das können wir echt mal. Ja. Vielleicht hätte ich morgen Abend Zeit dafür. Okay, ja, nice. And out of, allowing me to progress ich bin noch nicht ganz own. sicher, ich sag's dir dann Bescheid nochmal abends. Well, mm. sounds fun, not my cup of tea necessarily, but sounds fun. Giant game, reminds me of hatred, but a bit less controversial. Yeah, you, it's mm. both are about The in the arena booth thingy isn't know, really you know, loading for me. That's a pretty common concept in video games. Hmm. These enemies look oh, like it just takes forever, I don't know. By the way, thanks. Uh, or maybe you have to. Say, thanks a lot for the raid, uh, Felix and, and Radical Fish. Oh, yeah, but thanks so much for the raid. Uh, all you lot. Ah. Andrea, explore a ruined open world Can of I... and settlements. Damn it, I still need to wait for five minutes. Explore repairs, <laughs> choose your quests and dialogue. The old world is gone, the future is up to you. Well, side scrolling hack and slash. Could be cool. I don't know. Hi, hi, hi. Kind of bland, though. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, what do we have here? Heroes never no, die. Ich würde da mal auflegen, ne? Also schönen Abend allerseits. Okay. Ja, okay. 